subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. In a landmark announcement, astronomers from US, UK and Japan have announced the detection of the gas phosphine in the clouds of Venus. Phosphine, which goes by the chemical formula PH3, is synthesized on Earth by anaerobic life forms and decaying organic matter, as well as in the lab by humans. So the researchers set about trying to find the source of this gas on Venus and could come up with nothing that we know or understand that occurs naturally. So they offer as explanation only the two options that are left. Some chemical process that we do not know or understand yet, or life. In this episode, we're going to discuss the new findings from Venus. What phosphine is, how it was detected, what could possibly create it, why we think there could be life in the clouds of Venus, and what all of this means. My name is Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Phosphine gas is a biosignature on Venus. Biosignatures are markers that indicate potential present or past life. A common one is water, of course, whenever we send out spacecraft or we're looking at exoplanets or even other bodies in our own solar system, we chase after water because water is a biosignature. Similarly, there's also methane. We keep seeing methane spikes in the Martian atmosphere make news every time on Earth because on Earth, methane is produced by either volcanism or ruminating animals. There's no volcanism on Mars and unfortunately, there aren't any cows on Mars either. Venus is a different situation. The planet is a hellscape. It is the hottest planet in the solar system even though Mercury is closer to the Sun. The average surface temperature on Venus is 450 degrees Celsius, which, as everyone commonly says, is hot enough to melt lead. This is because of its dense atmosphere. Venus has the thickest atmosphere of the four rocky planets in our solar system, and this atmosphere is composed of almost 96% carbon dioxide. At one point in the past, we think that Venus did have liquid water with oceans, just like Mars also did, but at some point, a runaway greenhouse effect took hold and it started to raise global temperatures. In fact, we think this is the fate that awaits us on Earth if we don't act immediately. But back to Venus, naturally we do not expect life to survive on the surface at 450 degrees Celsius, but we think that about 50 kilometers above the surface in the clouds of Venus, the environment is a bit more temperate. Since at least the 1960s, some scientists have considered the possibility that pockets of Venus's upper atmosphere may host microbial life, despite the extremely acidic conditions that are prevalent there. Now, phosphine is produced on Earth, as we saw earlier, by human activity or by microbes, both of which are capable of maintaining and sustaining a certain concentration of the gas in the oxygen-filled atmosphere. In the presence of oxygen, phosphine reacts and disappears rather quickly. Natural processes do not produce enough of phosphine gas to keep the concentrations sustained in our atmosphere and it turns out that the same logic applies to Venus as well. There are trace amounts of gases that come and go and these can be attributed to natural processes, but a significant and sustained quantity of gas would imply life on Venus. Phosphine is found in the atmospheres of giant gaseous planets like Jupiter and Saturn because these environments lack oxygen and are at high temperatures and pressures, causing the same chemical reactions that we do in labs here to produce phosphine. But rocky planets do not have environments that are conducive to the natural production of phosphine, making it a potentially good indicator for life. So it's a good biosignature for Venus. Keeping this in mind, back in 2017, this research team actually originally set about performing a theoretical experiment where they could determine the amount of phosphine that would need to be detected on Venus to say that there is an indication of life. This was the objective with which they started their project. However, 
As soon as they started to look for phosphine, they surprisingly realized that there's much more phosphine than they anticipated in the clouds of Venus. The concentrations are at about 20 parts per billion, which is a number that's impossibly high for an environment that contains oxygen. And furthermore, the quantity is nearly a thousand times what is found on Earth. So naturally, this begged for an explanation. If you have seen the very first pilot episode of Breaking Bad, you have seen phosphine gas in action. Walter White inside the trailer van at gunpoint adds red phosphorus instead of iodine to water and it explodes. He traps two characters inside the trailer van as the colorless, odorless, toxic gas fills the vehicle. He later explains to Jesse that red phosphorus in the presence of moisture and accelerated by heat yields phosphorus hydride or phosphine gas. The visuals might not be all that accurate, but the reaction basically is. And this is what scientists hope to find as an explanation in Venus as well. But it turns out there simply are no chemical reactions that occur in Venusian clouds, which can explain this amount of sustained phosphine concentrations. The researchers started to eliminate natural causes one by one. First, they eliminated the accidental observations of other gases such as ammonia, which can falsely reflect as phosphine during detection. Then they examined the composition of the atmosphere and the reactions that could produce phosphine, only to conclude that the conditions are simply not good enough to produce the gas at such high concentrations in the atmosphere of Venus. Additionally, they also ended up eliminating planetary phenomena like volcanism or lightning for not being powerful enough again. Other exotic processes such as large-scale friction or even the solar wind could only produce the gas in negligible amounts according to their own paper and their findings. Furthermore, in the conditions where phosphine was found, the gas should survive for just about three years according to the researchers' estimation. But the presence of gas there today indicates that there is an active process that is producing it. The scientists have made it clear that although their findings offer life as a potential explanation to the presence of gas, the presence of gas itself is not evidence of life. If anything, going by our historical astronomical track record, most scientists think that it is likely that there is an alternate explanation for why phosphine is being produced other than alien microbes because it's never aliens. In this case, in a change from our regular discourse on extraterrestrial life, we can at least reframe it to say that it's likely not aliens, but for once, we can't know for sure.